All right, we're back. So we had some bad video, and we'll, we'll upload that later, like we said. But now, um, here we are. We've kind of done just the bullet firing, and that's it. I've uploaded everything to GitHub. Um, I'm going to uh, launch uh, Unity again. And we've got a very simple script for shooting. And it's very simple effects. No, by no means is this cover everything. And I really mean that. It's not, it doesn't cover very much at all. Um, it's really the most simplistic ways of doing things. OK. Who? Up until now, we've been stuck in, in, in uh, Pedro's tile, right? Which is nice tile, but it's kind of boring, right? So what we want to do is we want to add in a couple things. First of all, if I kind of drag this out for you for a second so you can see where the tile is, it's at the 0, 0, 0 mark, like we talked about. We have one barrel in the tile. And what I want to do is I want to add in a terrain. So the simplest way to do this is uncheck from this one. And I want to right click. Now, I would recommend you do this with me, guys and girls, because it's very complex if you don't do it with me. 3D object, terrain. All right. Now, so you can see that the terrain, Pedro's tile is slightly off center. And what I want to do is I want to move it so that the tile is on the terrain. We'll leave this part flat. But, 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 but. Here's what the terrain looks like. And there's the size of Pedro's tile. Take a look. Big terrain, small tile, right? OK. Caution number one. If you want, I'm going to put it out there for you guys. If you want to use rivers or some kind of lake in your terrain, you can never push down below the level of the original terrain. You can push up, but you can't push down below. It won't allow you to do that. So we have to build it up and then push down. That means everything has to have a default level. OK, let's understand that. So what I want to do is because the terrain is at position 0, 0, 0, and I know that I'm going to have to push it down, my recommendation is we push down from the Y around 10 meters. We don't want to go too low. Even five meters might be OK. But I want to show you this. So if you look at the Y, right, and the Y is Y up. So if I take this one, and if I look, kind of look around here, like up here, we don't want to move this terrain too much lower. But I want to tell you that it should probably be around minus 10. So if I go down, actually, again, you can see it goes minus 10. Not minus 20, minus 10, right? So the terrain is actually physically lower than the 0, 0, 0 point, OK, for a reason. That's number one. Two. Let's, I like Pedro's tile. Let's go back to Pedro's tile for a second and press F to frame select. Well, you can see that it starts at the bottom left hand corner of the train, right? We're going to push this over here. But for now, what I want to do is I want to move the whole tile and the character, the player. So we're, we're, we're going to kind of uh, shift click or um, control select, control click both the tile, the barrel, and the player, right? And we're going to move them to the left, all right? So that way, they're off the, the terrain for a second. We'll move it back afterwards. But for now, we're moving it way over here, OK? Because we want to work with the terrain. Now let's move over again. Oops. OK, so there's our actual terrain. This is the 0, 0 point in the bottom left hand. And like I said, I want to kind of raise this up a little bit. So terrains are kind of funny. If you click on the terrain, let me show you. You have these funky little controls on the side. This is like a terrain component up here. Trains are special. They also have a built-in collider, right? Leave it like this for now, please, OK? What I want to do is I want to impose or put on this terrain a default uh, texture that I want it to show. And the default texture I want to show is grass, OK? So in order for us to add textures, I'm going to talk about these little buttons here. On the terrain, if I hover over the buttons, right, this one is raise and lower. That's what this one does, the, the, the left one. If I click on this one, raise and lower. This one, paint height. And this is what I want to do to paint the terrain the same height, OK? This one smooths. This one paints a texture, which is what I want to do next. This one paints trees. This one paints details, like bushes, right? We'll come back to this in a second. And this one is the, the, the settings for the, all the entire terrain. For example, do we want to cast shadows?
do I want a, uh, to uh, head a material? How do I want to draw this? It says, do I want to bake the light probes? I do, absolutely, for a big terrain like this. How big is it? Ladies and gentlemen, it's 500 meters by 500 meters in length. Okay? That's half a kilometer, right? That's quite far. Right? I'm just putting it out there for you, right? My terrain height, 600 meters. So I can go as high as 600 meters. You can change this. So you can build mountains like the six that are 600 meters high, right? Really unclimbable in game, right? Um, height map resolution, how good is it? The detail resolution, you can increase these or change these to make them as crazy as you want. The, the bigger you make it, I'm putting it out there, the more the more insane it comes from a, from a uh, you know, calculation perspective uh, or computationally expensive, I should say, right? But that's what this is. So let's leave them alone, <laughs> right, for now. We'll come back to this later. OK, let's go back to this one, number, button number two, which is paint height. Notice that my brush size, there's brush size and there's opacity, OK? And there's height, 2.9, it says. What do I want to change this to? 10, right? If I go to 10. 1, 2, 10, 10. It's going to paint my height at 10. If I click flatten, it moved everything to 10. So everything is at a height of 10. If I try and paint height now with my brush, it's not going to do anything if I left click. Because I've already painted it as high as 10 automatically. That's the way to do it. If you were going to paint it by yourself, you could paint the height of 10. So everything is, I've actually added. 10 meters of height to my entire map. Now I'm doing that because I want to be able to go lower than the map. I can't go lower than the map unless I have height to work with, okay? I can't paint down. I can only add to the map. I can't go lower than the map's origin. But now I've painted 10 meters of height. There's actually 10 meters of, everything is actually brought up 10 meters. So I can go down as low as 10 meters now, now that I've done that. Okay, just a nose to know that this is the way it is, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to paint a texture. I'm going to click the paintbrush. And I'm going to click on Edit Textures because I don't have a texture yet. So let's click on Edit Textures, Add Texture. And I want to select a texture. Now, I have textures here. If you look at textures, I have a bunch of them. So soil Beach, right? I have Gravel Cobble, all, all kinds of other stuff. There's other textures that are included here inside my terrain. Right, so if I actually go into imported assets, and if I go to terrain assets, and if I go to textures, you can see that there's quite a few textures in here. Grass, meadows, lawn. I wanna pick probably lawn, right? And I can drag and drop this texture onto none, texture 2D. Okay? And click add, no, no, before you click add, see this where it says size, 15 by 15? This is the size of the tile, guys and girls. I want to make this probably 30 by 30, right, for this kind of size of screen. You can make this as big as you want or as small as you want. The bigger the tile, it's going to look a lot bigger, and it might kind of make it so that it's the resolution might be weird on one hand. But on the other hand, it, it won't repeat so often, right? Okay? Bigger the tile, less repeating. Okay, now if I click Add, if I just click Add now, everything is green. Right? Everything is the standard texture. So I've got my, my texture of the tile. Let's add another texture, right, for rock, basic rock texture. Okay, so I want to go into Edit Textures, right? I want to add a texture, and I want to add in my rock texture. I want to do the same thing, the same trick, 30 by 30, right? It's right around right, 30 by 30. I'm going to take rock basic, right, and put it inside the texture. There, and click Add Rock. And let's add some mud, right? Or sand, where it says there's actually uh, sand. And if you look at some of these things here, these are the ones I want to use because they're very nice, right? Um, there's cliff, and there's cliff rock, and there's cliff sandstone. Like, you can see quite a few textures here. So this is like regular rock. This is cliff, which I want to use too, so with layered rock. So I want to kind of add another one, add texture. Right, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, thirty by thirty again because we keep everything proportional. 
Sometimes even a larger one is okay. And I want to take a uh, cliff layered rock and put that in there. It's that kind of kind of layered effect. Remember what to texture do? It gives us the effect or the feel that it's actually bumpy when it's not. We can have low poly shape of our of our text of our landscape, right? But actually it looks like it's rocky and more higher higher polygon, high, higher quality, if you will. So you got a few rocks. Um, we have dirt grass. And I also want to have muddy grass. That's kind of what I want, muddy grass. And I also want to have some kind of wet, uh, sand wet, right? Like that kind of stuff. So I want to add these textures in there. So I want to add two more. So add a texture. And I'm going to say muddy grass. So kind of this mud texture, right? I'm preparing all my textures first because I don't want to do this again later. Press add. There's muddy grass. And notice I'm going from grass to rock to mud, right? You can do it any way you like. Add a texture. And I'm going to do uh, wet sand, right? Here it is. And you can add different ones that you like. This is uh, wet sand. We'll have sand beach, which, this will, which will be this one. So add a textures, add a texture, and then we'll say sand, beach, the first one. And you can see how, how much this is going to take time. All right? There you go, sand, beach. We're not going to have snow. I think we've got most of it right now for just the, lay, just the ground. <laughs> right? OK, cool. Now, when you want to paint stuff, Here's your paintbrushes, right, for the textures. But for now, we just have these ones we can use later on. Now, before we do this, I want to paint some height. I want to paint some height, and I want to create some mountains and hills, right? So I want to click away from this now and click this first brush, this one. Notice that we have a very small brush size, and it's, the size is about 30. The opacity here is really important. Opacity, in this case, the higher the opacity, if I move it to this side, that means that, and if I move the brush bigger, that means that when I press it once, it makes bumps very quickly, right? Now, I want you to think of this. Just like we're doing this, I'm going to undo these changes, right? I'm adding geometry. I, it's probably a good time before I start painting that I put my tile back. <laughs> because if I don't put my tile back and I start painting in this area, the tile is going to be on a mountain. I don't want that, right? So let's put our tile back. So how are we going to do that? So first, we're going to click on our tile, and we're going to click on our barrel. So control click, and we're going to click on our player because we want them all to move together. And we want to move them back onto the landscape, right? I want to move, kind of zoom in. You can see that it's on the floor because of the way I did it. Right, it's pretty much on the floor there. I think it's not hovering, right? And this is where we're going to have, we're going to come into play like this, right? And just before I do anything else, I want just to play it like this. All right, so let's press play, and let's see what I see. Okay, here's our landscape, right? And you can see what I'm talking about when I just change this, the, the, what, what it looks like. So I made it 30 by 30, right? Uh, I actually reduced the resolution, right? Now, if I increase that, it's going to look more... Um, so the scale is going to be slightly different. It's going to look smaller, but it's not going to be conducive to what I want to do. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second, if I run, so here's me, here's me walking across the desert, kind of, of, of my <laughs> like grass. You can see that the terrain is very large, right? And if I run with pressing Shift key, is I'm even jumping. I'm still running. I'm still running. It's almost 500 meters. Yeah, I'm joking. Yes, it is. It's pretty darn large. I wanted to show you the, the distance. So I want you to get the scale of what we're doing here. This is massive, right, what we're, what we're kind of building here. You can obviously reduce this size, but you can get a sense of it, how big the tile is compared to the whole terrain. Okay. Two, now that I have my tile placed, 
right? I want to start sculpting. And I want to probably start sculpting over here. I want to make a path for the player to enter this, the, the game over here, right? Somewhere over here. And I want to make mountains on this side and maybe a lake over here, OK? Now, you can choose to do it wherever you like. This is the fun of it, right? So I'm going to go back to the train. And I'm going to go back to the first one. And now I'm going to start painting height of my mountains from a very high level. Now, this, my friends, is an iterative process. If you try to map a mountain by doing this, it will look weird, OK, like you see, right? You want to slowly map your terrain a little bit at a time and then add to it, right, by clicking one click, one click, one click. Why? It's more realistic. It'll be actually, it'll look a lot better when we do it this way than if you do a whole terrain. See how that lifted up? A whole terrain, right, of stuff. And you can undo, you know, that you want to kind of put into play, right, where you slowly are putting these things, these mountains into play, right? Now the mountains will frame or create our box for our game, right? Almost like a sandbox, actually exactly like a sandbox because you can make them so that they are unclimbable, right? So this is our game, this is our sandbox. You can see this how it goes. So this is how it is. It looks like we're making, painting a terrain here, slowly, slowly, right? Or big, big. If I want to make a train like this, I can do that too, undo. Right, but what I want to do is slowly, slowly increase the size. Thanks, Alexander. Increase the size of my terrain by painting mountains. And I can increase the size of my opacity and the size of my brush. Thank you. If I want to pick, uh, kind of produce bigger ones in some areas. And if I want to push down, I press shift and click like this. So you can see that I'm creating mountains. And let's say I want to make a big mountain over here. So just from a scenery perspective, like on the right. So I want to make a kind of a big mountain. I'm going to really build this area up here by clicking a little bit at a time. And then to increase the mountain size, right, a little bit at a time here. So this basin that I'm making is not so jagged or unrealistic, but some height is being painted on. Now remember, I can only paint on maximum of 600 meters. But it's looking pretty good right on this side. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can see now that I've got some height painted on this side. Maybe I want to do a little bit over here. And you can see that naturally and slowly, slowly, you can paint your hills gently. And this is where it becomes quite enough fun to do and artistic to paint your, your hills here in a very slow manner without doing too, too much craziness, okay? And again on this side. So we don't wanna make it too square. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here, right? And, but kind of produce this area that looks like a little basin and if I want to reduce, like if this is too much, I can go shift, shift click to kind of reduce this. Not too much, Tom. Oh, shift click. Now I want to reduce the opacity here when I shift click, right? Because if I shift click down, it'll actually bring this right down too low, right? So I want to kind of shift click. So I'm just dropping it down a little bit, like a little bit of a depression there. Now, I want the lake to be over here. Nope. I want the lake to be over here. You can see what I'm doing. And this is where I want it to be. So now I'm going to shift click and actually draw a depression. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Now look what's happened. It's going to rock it. It's going to bottom out because that's what's happening with my lake. Slowly, slowly, my lake bottoms out. So I got about 10 meters to work with. Pretty deep, 10 meters, but not that deep. And if I want to make rivers, I 
Right? And maybe over here. That's good. All right, let's get a bit of a lake. But we have no color. Yeah, everything's green right now. Okay, let's paint some texture. And also, by the way, I'm I'm using a very round brush. If you want to add some more texture to this thing, to make it more interesting, um, you could pit the brush with one of these. Like for these are random. You can see how it looks now. It looks kind of different. So again, if I was to zoom out here by clicking away. So if I want to go to the terrain. And let's go do one of these. You can see if I can go right in there to see what it looks like right now. There's the depression. And um, if I go back to here and I start painting, you can see that the brush is, it adds a little bit of roughness to the mountains, right? So you can make it so, and I want to really reduce the opacity. Remember, it's an iterative process, slowly, slowly, to make it look more realistic. If you do too much, too, too fast, what happens is, you get something that looks unrealistic. You want to kind of add some roughness. And all this is doing is changing the geometry of your, uh, of your, of your world, right? So there we go. We're painting, painting, painting. I'm going to show you how to smooth in a second. So there we go. So I'm adding some small geometry to the rocks, the hills. Okay. Okay, so we got a bunch of hilly areas and some roughness. And if it's too much, you know, we can always smooth by using the smooth button, this one. This one smooths it out. And again, I would probably make my brush bigger and smooth, smooth, smooth. What this does is it smooths the brush, smooths it over like this, creates a much smoother area as I draw to smooth out some of these rough patches in random order. If I want to make it really smooth, you can make it like this. So it kind of smooths it out, right? So it kind of makes it more rounded as opposed to rough, right? And we got more of a, uh, you know, more of an organic looking mountain, okay? Now we need to add some texture. So we're going to click on this little button here for the paintbrush. And what I want to do is, uh, this is pretty big, this brush. Um, I want to kind of tone it down. It's pretty 85. Maybe I want to drop it down to around 50 now. This is, again, I want to choose probably one of these for the cliffs, right? And I, it, the opacity, the strength here is the opacity. So if I click it, you can see that as I click it, what I'm getting is this texture being painted for some of the cliffs, and we want to kind of go as easy as possible here, only on the tops of the mountains where these cliffs are, and because it'll look very unrealistic, right? So on the tops of the mountains, for the cliffs, we don't want to drag too much, and we want to put them just a little bit at the top, and maybe this, probably not the right texture for this, but you can see that we're getting a different look and feel to it. And now we want to change to rock and do the same thing, but this time we want to paint a little bit more liberally right on top of that, right? So I kind of give this look and feel of rock. You can see I'm just clicking. And if you, someone who really likes this kind of work, you can also use a tablet. If you have a Wacom tablet or whatever, uh, you can also use a tablet for this because this is very, you can paint this with your hand a lot better than with a mouse, right? So you can see now that it's becoming very rocky with some areas that are cliffy. And all I'm doing is I'm adding, because of the opacity, it's very high. You can turn this down a little bit more to the area, right? So I'm getting away with that, getting away from just grass and I'm adding what looks like texture for the mountains. And I can just rotate this thing around to get the other side here. And I want to kind of get some hilly area or some rocky areas around here because this is where it's going to be rocky. And especially back here, I missed this part. You know, all I'm doing is painting a, an image. 
on top of these things to give it the illusion of being more, this is actually too high, um, of being more, and it doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to actually go down to um, paint that down a little bit. But, so I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to use kind of a rough brush to do this. See this little thing here? It doesn't make any sense. I'll use this little rough brush. Nah, it's too big. Maybe paint it with this, and then kind of drag it down, shift click. And then I'm going to reduce this so it's becoming a little rougher. See? It looks much more realistic now. And I'm actually shift clicking to reduce these things to make it more re realistic looking, more pitted, um, so to speak. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because we don't have time. But the idea here is that um, what you want to do is you want to try and mask um, the hills and everything else with a rough. That this needs more pitting here again. So again, I'm going to go here and grab one of these ones. And I'm going to shift click just to add some pitting and lower some of this stuff a little bit to make it a little rough. If that's too, uh, too much, you can also use the star, kind of add these cracks, right? There we go. So almost add this crack in there, right? Make it more craggy as opposed to. You know, that kind of thing to make it more realistic. And you can see that as I'm shift clicking, and I can also do a little bit of a smooth, right? So um, so I'll paint it there, but I can do a smoothing, right? So it's not as bad. And maybe that's too much on do. There we go. Maybe do that smoothing again, but then reduce the opacity, like bring that target strength right down. And you can see it's, it's, it's going to go slow, right? So please don't uh, don't freak out with this kind of stuff. It's meant for you to be to relax and and kind of um, put in the stuff that you want your place to look like without uh, a lot of stress. Here, I find that sometimes doing art like this and this is an artwork, believe it or not, level building, right? Level painting more than anything else. And again, if you just take you take it easy, you can actually enjoy what you're doing. I got some of this green area here. And I think now what I want to do is start painting other areas in here, like the muddy paint. So I'm going to go into mud grass up, up on the hill here, just around the area. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of paint that, and that's too much. I just did a little test area, a test strip, so to speak. And I want to reduce the strength, the target strength way down, <laughs> as well as the opacity should be kept fairly low, the big brush size. So let's see, too much, and two. Blocky. I think I even want to go with a different kind of brush, like something that's a little bit rougher, right, for this to make it so it's more random. So kind of a muddy bank, right? And you want to kind of paint that around, right? So kind of give that whole area a little bit of mud. This is the bottom of the lake, right? So I'm kind of just painting it in there. And this will be another one. I can paint that in there too. Add that in there, a little bit of more browns, right? You can see I'm getting rid of more of the grassy type, but still that whole area there, around here, and into there, especially in here, right? Because that's where I want to kind of paint the area, make it a little bit more muddy as we come up to there. You can see what I'm doing. Again, it's, it's, it's up to you. This is kind of using your artistic ability to kind of think about how your stuff should look. You know, should it look more muddy or less muddy? You know, you can add a little bit of a green in there, and you can use different colors to accentuate that. Okay, cool. So we got an area that's a bed, and now maybe at the outset I want to be, do a little some areas that are more like a beach head, like maybe over here, where I want to kind of gently, and I mean gently, add kind of a sandy area again around here which and again maybe i want to use some other kind of brush more of a spatter of sand and a very light iterative process here maybe that's a little bit too much you can see how that uh, can, can grow or you know reduce the target strength even more again just to kind of give it that you know rough and you know random kind of look Okay, good. So we've kind of got a little bit of sand, some areas, you know, we have some areas that are more rocky, and you can see that what we've got right now is pretty good. 
Now let's add some water. Okay. Now this water that I want to add is going to be moving water. And there's, a, there's an effect we can do for that, right? So again, under, um, oops, undo. It's not what I wanted, but anyway, um, it doesn't matter. What I want to do is under my environment, so under standard assets, and if I go to environment, and if I go to water, don't go to water basic, go to water. And there's two waters, water and water four. If I double click on water, and if I go to prefabs, there is water pro daytime, okay? I want to take this prefab, water pro daytime, and I want to basically put it right where the water should be, like over here. And this is the water pro uh, daytime. And if I focus in there, so if I go kind of, whoop, By the way, see this arrow that I just got, right? It's because player shooting behavior, right? Um, the reason why it's telling me this is because I dragged and dropped it uh, irresponsibly. <laughs> so somewhere in here, I got some kind of player shooting that I dragged and dropped, and it's messed me up. And I can't undo, because I don't know where I dragged and dropped it. It was, it was completely uh, coincidental. And so what I have to do is look at all scripts for a second. And where there is a player shooting, there's two. And one of the ones is not mine, like this one. I think I copied it, so let's just get rid of one. Cancel. How about if I do this one? No. So this one, if I delete. Terrain assets scripts. Okay, that's where that's where that's where it went. So, um, terrain assets. So assets, import assets, terrain assets scripts. I don't know. I guess I copied the scripts. So I delete that whole thing. Delete. And we still got that one. And let's make sure that player has the, my scripts because that would be very bad. That's good. Okay. That should take care of my problem. Yay! <laughs> Irresponsible drag and drop is what I call it. All right, uh, save my scene. Um, sorry about that. So let's go back. So if I go back to um, what I was looking at was standard assets inside my assets, standard assets under my um, environment. I want to go to water, and I've dragged and dropped my water, which is Water Pro Daytime. So water. And then if I go to prefabs, water pro daytime. But if you notice, if I go back to my scene, and if I look at water pro day, uh, daytime and press F to frame select, it's right here, right? And if I use this to bring it up so you can see it, it looks like a circle. OK, I don't know if you guys got this too, circle. All right, so how do I change this into a plane? Well, take a look over here on the right. Inside my water pro daytime, Right on the right, it says water plane mesh, and then it's a water plane mesh that I'm using. I don't want that. I want to select, right, a plane, and they you can use that as a as a default, the default plane size, which is this, right. And the plane is 16 by 16. I can make it pretty big. I can make it something like 50 by 50 which if you see the size, it's still under the size of my object, right? So 50 by 50. And if I pull this up, here's my, on my Y axis, as I raise it, it'll cover more and more of my lake. So here's, here it's gone, and then here it is existing. Right? I don't want to pull it too high, because if I pull it too high, it'll actually appear in other places. But something like this. I'm thinking about minus 6.5, minus 6, something like that. Now, to show you what this does, just to show you, right, it fills in this part, and any other area that seems to be water, it'll fill in nicely and give nice reflection probes and everything else. Let's take a look and see what that looks like now, OK? So here it is, my barrel. Let's shoot the barrel. Destroys the barrel. Walk, and I'm going to walk, and I'm going to walk. And you can see how big the mountains are and how they look. Pretty good, huh? 
And that, this needs to be fixed. See how this is like a rocky hill? That needs to be kind of painted with a mountain. And then you need to, you should walk your terrain to kind of see what it looks like, to see like this is not right, um, and so on. And some areas that need to be fixed, right? But that's what you should do. I'm, I'm running actually right now to the edge. So this is taking a long time. So I'm going to go back to the game. And I'm going to make this guy appear near the lake because that's where I want him to be. So I'm going to take my player. I'm going to focus in on him, right? And what I want to do, yeah, jump in the lake. That's right. I want to, now that I've got him, I can kind of move over, over here, like way over here and way over here, and then focus back in on him. And you can see he's still not very close to the lake. So kind of move over here. And I'm not changing his height, thank God, because if I change his height, they'll be back. Move over here. And let's see where he is now. He's pretty much at the lake. Let's try it from there. Okay. So now let's see what the lake looks like. And we have pretty cool water effect. Don't jump in. Oh, yeah, because... No, but because... Remember, I, I talked about this with some of you guys. Um, this is neat, right? But the problem is, what you have here, if you look at the scene... And I want to put this out is this is surface water effect. In order for us to do a real effect, which we'll do later on in the course, we're at week nine right now, we have time, right? Which is going to take another hour. <laughs> we block these effects. In. You want to add a feature? It's going to take an hour, all right? At least. For me to make a volumetric kind of effect, it's actually called a caustic effect, right? To give you buoyancy and all this kind of stuff. If you, if you actually look it up, caustic water, right? With Unity. You can actually download a um, an asset. If I go to the asset store, I'm going to show you this for a second. So if you really want to go do realistic water effects, here's my asset store. One day it's going to actually show up, the asset store. Come on, asset store. OK, maybe not. Yeah, if I go to uh, asset store, do 3D. Uh, and if I search for, uh, as an example, caustic water for center, and what you're going to get is realistic effects. And you can see how the shader costs like 35 bucks, right, to kind of download it. And there's other, other ones in here too. And by the way, even if I was to do this, like look, it says water and caustic shader, right, $7.99. Um, so it gives you an example of what it would look like, right? Here's open shader. And water advanced, so it gives you some some hills, right? And it shows you what it looks like, as well as what it looks like to be inside the caustic map and caustic color and caustic transparency and all those things you need to kind of break the effect of what it looks like to be in the water. Okay, I'm putting it out there for you guys. So if you ever want to do realistic water effects, the surface layer is only one. So that covers your problem: the surface layer, the moving water, right? And but it doesn't cover um, this stuff, being inside of a pool, all right? So just putting it out there, I will do this later on. If, if we can, we have time, I'll try and get this done. But I'm just telling you that it's not as easy as you think, OK? OK, next. Let's go back to Unity for a second. So I'm going to point it out to you just so that you know you don't know it's like, you don't think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm lying to you. It's, it's quite, it can be quite complex. Um, so I'm here, and what I want to do is, of course, I want to, Kind of copy the barrel, so I'm gonna kind of uh, I'm gonna kind of put the barrel. I'm gonna test my barrel inside my scene somewhere, right? So I'm gonna frame select my barrel way over here, and there's my barrel, and I want to transport my barrel where my character is. So I uh, um, I want to, yeah. Well, let's just put it over here and really come out to here, and put it over here. And you know it's hard to see where it is right now, but it's probably somewhere here. I'll, I'll go on the barrel, which is way off into oblivion. And we'll put it up here, up here, up here. There's my barrel. And we'll see, see, the, see how big the barrel is to the water. We'll just give you a scale. OK, and I will drop the barrel, and we'll play. There's the barrel, right? And it fell. So if I, run, if I, if I fire at it, It'll actually will destroy the barrel way over there, right? Okay, but I want to give you this the the you know the scale here of, of my fire. That's why I did this kind of stuff. Okay. So so far we've done a landscape, a terrain, 
that I want to add before we go some trees, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's paint some trees, right? So again, going back to terrain. And if you look at the tree, there's a tree button, right? And it says, I want to, there's no trees defined. So I want to edit trees. I want to add a tree, right? And it says, now please assign a tree, the tree prefab, right? So now it's got to look, it's going to look for your prefabs. You can look at all your prefabs here. There's bush, look, and there's broadleaf desktop. But what I want to look for is, you know, the type of tree that I want, right, that I want to paint. So there's willow tree. There's different kinds of trees here, okay? So you can see that these are all the different kinds of tree. The thing I've got different bushes, which is like a tree. I got a conifer, right? And these are all all these different uh, things. So I want to try broadleaf desktop. That's the one I want to use, right? And it's a tree prefab, and press add. And now I want to select this area, and we have this massive tree zone, like this. That happened like in two seconds. I just kind of pick the tree and paint some trees and paint some more trees and paint some other trees. How about paint some trees on the mountains? That'll work too, right? It doesn't make sense, but it'll work. So let's try it out and see what I got here with painting the trees. And now they're the trees. Take a look. That took two seconds, right? And I can't go through them. They actually won't allow me to walk through trees. I can see through the trees sometimes. But I can't, and they, they are random as well, right? There's some random trees. I can walk through this area, and you can see that I've got a bit of shade and everything else. Okay, now I've got shade, but I highly recommend, because this is terrain, and we're doing light maps that are baked, please bake again. Every time you add some other, other things, bake your light map. You may have to bake it a couple times. So I'm going to go back to my lighting, and I'm going to go back to where it says build, and the fog is something else we're going to talk about after. If I click build, it's going to bake my light map again. Let it build because what this will do is it'll make it more performant, right? If you don't do this, it takes some time. You guys are laughing. But it takes some time for this kind of stuff to happen, right? <laughs> right? Why? What's wrong? <laughs> oh, they're, they're small? Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> Trees are bro broccoli, right? Okay. Questions so far? I know this is crazy, but it's quite of fun, right? If you spend some time doing this kind of stuff. Now, this is the going back to what you said. He said, sir, we want to really do some creative stuff. But we have so many darn courses. We have no time for creativity. Um, you know, it didn't take long. I mean, we did it under an hour to paint this terrain. Um, if you really want to spend some time, that's why I gave it to you and your partner. Hopefully, you have you and a partner to do stuff with. So you don't, you give some people, see how the light map just changed? Um, you want to, oh, it's not even done yet. Still baking. You want to split your jobs up, right? So one person should take care of things like shoot the barrel, right? You know, like things that we did with the the gun, the animations. Those kind. Another person should take care of trains and 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 your backgrounds, right? And your level. And you may want to switch that up. Like when you go when you guys go to the final project, you might have one person's designing one project, second person's designing a or, or sorry the first level, second person's designing another level, third person's designing another level, and everyone has is in charge of their own level. Right? Because guys and girls, it's gonna take too much time for one person to do it all. And there's like I said, we're trying to do the work of hundreds of people, programmers and the like. Right? Okay, now we finally baked everything. I'm gonna save my scene, that's important to do, and then press play. Let's see what it looks like now. Pre bake lights. Better performance, right? Okay, shadows are a little bit nicer in some ways and not as realistic. The barrel's still moving. Oh yeah, see the, that's the performance. Uh, that's the performance uh, hit. See the performance hit I just took. Now the reason for this is because I got a massive landscape that's 500 meters by 500 meters. Question: Do you think it's important to make a landscape 500 meters by 500 meters? Do you have to really do it this big? The answer is no. You can make it like 20 by 20, you know, 30 by 30, 100 by 100, right? Not 500. Like it's it's a sandbox. Look how big this is. And of, of course, to get the feel of how big this thing is. You should try and you should try and, and 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 try it out. How long does it take for you to walk across? If it takes you a couple minutes to walk across, it's too long. Right? If you walk across within about a minute, 60, 30 seconds, that's okay. Right? Because 
you got to figure, you know, the whole game, the whole level should take about five minutes to play. That's including you avoiding enemies, shooting, getting points, collecting items, the whole thing, right? If you make this thing massive, it's going to take way longer than five minutes. And it won't do me, I, I can't do it justice. I mean, I see your thing, because, well, that's, wow, that's great, <laughs> right? But that's, you know, I won't be able to look at it, right? So please be careful when you make these things. It's nice. You get some really cool water effects. And maybe what I want to just make this water effect a little, come up a little bit more, right? And by the way, I only used 10 meters. I could have used a lot less. Right, so let's try this out. I'm gonna save the game, and I'm gonna come out of uh, I'm gonna come out of tree mode. Right, uh, you can add other kinds of trees. Like I only like, added broad leaves. Right, um, you could also edit the trees. Right, by adding new trees, I can also talk about the tree collider. You could you know change the the size of the trees and how it works and everything else. Like if I click this, the actual tree itself, you can see that I have my brush size my tree density, how many trees I have in that area, are the random, the height is random. I can also make the low end and the high end a little taller, like taller trees that I can intersperse with these ones, like this, you see? So I have some tall trees and short trees with a much thicker, uh, you know, forested area, you know, um, lots of stuff. Please, you know, you can experiment with some of this stuff and we'll do more of this later on, but for now, Let's leave it. Let's go back to Water Pro Daytime. Water Pro Daytime is not a great si uh, thing for this. I'm just going to call this um, Water Terrain. We can call this Land or Ground, right? Just so it makes more sense than just Terrain. You don't have to call it Terrain. It's a game object. You name it whatever you want. And uh, what I want to do is I want to click on the Water Terrain and then just bring it up slightly more. Like right now it's at uh, minus 6. You know, maybe one want to put is at minus six and uh, you know one minus five. Ooh, not too much. That's too much. That's minus three. Minus three might be good. It's a little deeper now. Okay, and and you can see that in here I have a bit of a of depression that I made by accident. See this, which I have to fix. So I'm gonna go back to my terrain and then we'll finish. So here's my ground. And we'll go back to raise and lower. And I'll pick this one and maybe make the opacity a little bit much smaller. Just click that away. A little bit of bumpy ground. Actually, we, to see what it looks like to go on bumpy ground, you can see that there's a little bit of hills now before you get into the forests. And um, I've just added some hills. And if I go back to the player, And if I want to move him, his position is 195x and 195z and 1.2. If we move, go back to 0, 0, right, 0, 0 point and kind of focus in on him, it's not quite where I want him, but at least he's way, way better than what he was. Much easier for me to match his position. And I want to put him back to where we had him, right? Which is inside here for a second. There we go. Play. Okay, so here it is. And if I was to run, you can see that now I've got a bit of bumps here where you can actually, and even on the hills, I can go up the hill nice and smooth and down the hill. It's not going to affect you in any negative way, right? And you can see that the trees come into play. And there's some tall trees and some short trees. And we got some baked lighting coming up. And it's not so bad. Okay, and if I can fire my gun, right, I get some really weird effects. It's kind of loud on my ears right now. You guys can't hear it, maybe. Okay, but it's pretty loud, right? It's really loud, right? Let's, let's turn that, like, way down. Woo, that's terribly loud. Okay, so we've got some stuff. How about enemies? And someone said, what about enemies following me? What do I do? How do I make the enemies follow me? Um, easy way to make your enemies follow you, and I'll, I'll leave this off uh, for you guys. We'll talk about it again next week uh, for the enemies, is you need to, there's two possibilities. One, vector threes allow you to put something into play. If I go to my scripting API and looked at vector three, oh, it's actually here. Um, under vector three, there are some public functions right, set and two string, and some static functions. Here's one 
that you can use, move towards, right? What move towards does in the scripting API is it moves towards a, a location. So you can say something like this. You can say transform position is equal to vector three move towards and then where I'm starting and what my target position is and I can have a step and the step will be time dot delta time. So it'll be, that's the speed that I'm moving, right? Speed times speed, and I can kind of do this. So imagine if I want to move towards the player, and I want to move, I have like a few random balls that are rolling towards the player, all right? By the way, you can fly too if you really want. Let's put them into play really quickly. How do I do that? So we'll do it in here because it's nice and easy, right? So we'll make a new object. Make the barrel move towards the player. Okay, he says with a smile on his face. All right. Um, Yes, we can. We can do the barrel moving towards the player. It's kind of weird, though, but sure. All right, we have a we have an object. Isn't right? it widely known that barrels are evil? Barrels are evil. All right, and barrels will move towards players. So now we have a, a an enemy, right? So yes. if we use the script, so the barrel is going to move towards the player. And if you notice the script, if I go back to the script, it shows you. It says this dot transform will be the target, and I'm going to put it on the barrel. That's where the script is going to be on the barrel, right? So let's add the script to the barrel. So first of all, we'll make a script. I'm going to kind of fix this up here. So that's why I put import assets. Here's scripts. Make a new script really quickly, C sharp script. And we'll and this is the simplest and stupidest way to do it, by the way, right? Um, I'll call this, you know, uh, follow player, <laughs> follow player. And you know, if I double click on the script, right? Um, I'm going to just like literally go here and you know copy some of the stuff. So we need a target, and we need a speed. And they're both public values, right? So we're going to go to um, public, okay, which is game object, target, and public float speed, right? Those are two objects we can, we can put in there, right? And then in our update, what we want to do is we want to say float a step is speed times time, some delta time. I'm just going to copy these two lines, actually. And I'm going to adjust these this transform to make it part of our regular code. There we go. So float step is equal to this dot speed. We'll say speed with a capital S. And this will be just to keep it so it's ours, so it doesn't look like it's just from thing. And this is public step. It's time dot delta time. Transform position is this dot transform position. We'll make this private, uh, which will be transform, well, which is underscore transform. That's what we normally do, right? And we'll make this public variables really quickly. Public variables for testing. Uh, and this is, and when you have your test finally done, you take them away. And then private variables. And in here in my start method, I'm going to say this dot uh, underscore transform is equal to this dot game object. Uh, game object, or sorry, get component. So I just need to do get component. And then transform. So I have a reference to my transform component that's separate from the one that's built in. And this could be this dot underscore transform dot transform dot position is equal to vector three move towards what transform position. That's where we start off this dot underscore just to get an idea. Underscore transform position to the target position which was the target with a capital T this time, this dot target position, right? And then by step. Lower case. Yeah? Um, so actually, what this should be is not a game object view transform we don't care about the game object. We just care about the transform. So this should be uh, target dot position, right? That's probably easier. OK, so now that we got this, we're going to attach this to the barrel really quickly. So we're going to go back to the barrel. Here's the barrel, my barrel object. And I'm going to take my, I'm going to collapse some of these things. And here's my rigid body. But I want to take my script, follow player, and add it to the barrel, right? And I need my target and my speed. So target would be the player. So here's my player, right? And my speed will make it five, 
I'll see how fast that is. And let's try it out. So, and let's see if I run away. Run away. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Let's see how fast it is. Oh, no. Let's make it not. So. Pause the retro. Pause the retro. It's like that evil tire bundle. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it's on me, man. It's on me. Right. Uh, oh, wait. wait. Yeah, that thing. Anyway, so you can see how fast it's maybe too fast this five, but maybe we can put it down a little bit lower. So if I go, yeah, something like two might be right. And if I go to two, so make this like to two or three, let's say. Let's say three will be oh, two. Two is more challenging. Or, or not as challenging and then under models sorry under prefabs I want to make my barrel my prefab this one right so that way it's it's reserved right and I want to get rid of this this barrel so I have one barrel and what I want is that this barrel will follow me but I want to duplicate this barrel so I want to kind of actually I'll just duplicate it where I want it so let's say I want to have more than one barrel let's see if that works now It's not bad, right? That's that's doable, and it's going to keep on pushing against me. Now this is shaking because it needs to be exploded, right? That's what it needs. It needs exploding. So now you've got an enemy, right? Now that's how long it took. Like it took no time. It's a stupid way of doing it, but it will follow you to death. Like it'll follow you across mountains. It'll follow you into the water. It'll follow you across other barrels. It'll follow you in this. It, it, It'll go around the obstacle. It'll try and go towards. If you're if you're on if there's an obstacle in front, it won't go around. It'll just sit there and kind of wait until it can go around. Unless you move your position, then it'll try and go at you, right? So it'll keep. So stupid way of doing it, but now you've got the enemy. Worst case, okay. Uh, better things to do, obviously, to move like this is something round, like a ball, right? If it's going to be something like this, it's going to come at you, right? Like some kind of debris or something like that, like uh, rolling uh, evil barrels or whatever. I mean, it's got to make sense, right? Don't make it so that it's a character, like some kind of zombie that, fl that flips over at you. Like it's like, or, if, but you, some people have seen uh, ghosts that kind of float at you. That can kind of work. Um, yes, you can lock rotation. You can do all that stuff. So if you want to try that, if you want to lock its rotation, so in a rigid body, um, just, to be, just to be clear, you can go here and say, I want to freeze my rotation across all the axes, right? So now it'll just come at you all the time. Like, so come at you, and now it'll just come at you. And now it won't, it'll bump you, but it won't flip over, right? See? No matter what happens. But it'll still come at you. Now here I'm behind the, I'm behind the corner, and it's still going to come at me, right? You know, it almost floats. Look. Oh, yeah. If I go over, if I go way over here, look, watch. Run away! I'm in the mountains, right? Look, it's still gonna follow me, right? Forever, F slow, but it'll come at me, and it'll come at me forever until it comes to the point where it's come to the mountain. Like, watch, it's coming to the mountains, and it's still trying. It's trying to come out the mountain, and it'll find a path, slowly, slowly, until it climbs, until it's and it's waiting for me because it can't come up here, right? But then it needs exploding. Oh. Why is this happening? Right? Because the camera is actually pointing down because the mountain is here and there's height. I can't see it. The camera is actually looking at the mountain because of where, the way I'm positioned. So again, these are issues. But if I come closer, I should be able to eventually get to the top. Oh, also, sorry. The barrel is where I'm, where, uh, how I'm hitting it is from the top. I go to the side, no problem, right? There's different issues because of the collider and, and hitting the barrel. So guys and girls, these are all little things, right? And imagine me doing testing over and over again. That's how you fix these issues, by testing, right? Okay, so we've, let's, let's recap. I know we've gone a little over uh, 50 minutes or so. But let's recap the stuff we've done today. We've talked about the gun for the FPS, right? For the first-person shooter, right? If you're going to make a first-person shooter. That took us three hours, right? I'm sorry to do that, but that's just like the scripting that we took. Then we did a little bit of a landscape with some water and some trees. That took us another hour or so. And the enemy took us two minutes, <laughs> the way we did it. And the other smarter way to do the enemy, and we're gonna talk about that next week, is using 
uh, nav mesh, which is actually a much smarter way to do it, where you create a navigation mesh, right? Where you can tell the enemy where to walk and where not to walk, right? Where the enemy will climb and do a lot of things that you can do and jump. <laughs> you know, do all kinds of other stuff with it. But you need two components for the nav mesh. There's a nav mesh agent, which is attached to the enemy, and then a nav mesh, right? Those two things, nav mesh agent and nav mesh. And it's actually really simple, and you don't need to code it like this. It'll just work. <laughs> so no code, right? And it'll work beautifully, right? Um, and it's built into Unity. It's not the best nav mesh agent, and it doesn't use the best pathfinding algorithm. You can use other pathfinding algorithms, which you will explore at, at you know ad nauseum in uh, uh, game programming too, right? If you're taking game programming too. So, but so we're not going to do that. There's other ones you can use. Any questions around this stuff? Now, this should almost give you an, enough to build your game, right? Because you've got tiles, ma tile mapping, and I apologize. Next week we'll do more tiles, not just Pedro's tile. Um, I, I know it's terrible. Oh, you're killing me with this material stuff, Pedro. But um, so next week we'll do while well, I'm talking. Uh, next week we'll talk about this stuff, right? So here's materials, right? Which one? Yeah, you don't even know carpet, right? There's the carpet, right? And the textures for the for the for the thing it's not, it didn't come in, right? That's what it was. So the the tech the models didn't include textures, just materials. Uh, so next week we'll talk about, uh, um, like I said before. We'll talk about uh, more stuff with the terrain. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about enemies, right? Because enemies have to be talked about next week. I remember next week we'll also, I'm probably going to give you your final project details next week because we're sitting at week 10. And you need 10, week 11, week 12, week 13, and then, the and then a presentation at the end that's going to take the place of your exam, right? So I need to give you next week, the, the, the final project can take me about an hour to kind of talk about, right? Or 45 minutes, something like that. And then some other enhancements for your game, like, for example, score, how to move from one scene to the other, how to pass data, how to save your game, lots of stuff. And we still got miles to go. Up ahead, things like mini-maps, how to see that your game from a distance, how to create a mini-map from, a, from a, you know, other things like that, uh, more advanced enemies, different kinds of 3D animation. We're going to cover all that stuff over the next few weeks, so stay tuned. Thank you so much, and see you next week.